There are hundreds of places in the UK that have railway stations. Some places even have more than one. But out of all the places in the UK, only four of them have underground networks. And even though quite a few stations, most notably in London, are not underground, it's worth noting that many of the stations are. And what's also worth noting is that all the lines that make up London Underground go underground at some point along the route. Welcome to the episode where I take you through the four different locations here in the UK that have an underground network. Three of the stations are located here in England, London, Liverpool and Newcastle. And the fourth one all the way up in Glasgow. Also, to challenge myself as I travel up to these places and to pay homage to where this refreshing beverage comes from, I've also bought with me five bottles of Iron Brew. The challenges here are to see not only how long I can make them last, but also how many will I have left to take into the energetic country of Scotland. I'll also make a point that the only other beverage I can have apart from that is water. There are many mysteries of the British Railway that are dying to be discovered. Join me, Darren Stratton, as I take you round the four corners of the UK to explore the many mysteries that a station and its platforms have to offer. The underground area of London is split across nine fare zones and although you can get an underground day pass that allows you to travel around six of them, that's about 90, 95% of the underground, there are a small number of stations that are not included on the ticket. Croxley, Watford, Carpenters Park, Rickmansworth, Chorleywood and Theobald's Grove are in fare zone seven, Charlfont and Latimer Bushy, Watford High Street and Chesham are in Fair Zone 8. Chesham, Amersham and Brentwood are in Fair Zone 9. There are other stations that are on the tube map that are outside of the, of the zones. Time for a tongue twister. The five stations in Ryslip, Ryslip, Ryslip Garden, South Ryslip, West Ryslip, Ryslip Manor are split into Fair, fair Zones 5 and 6. London Waterloo is the biggest station in the whole of the UK with 24 platforms. It also used to serve as the terminus for the Eurostar. Those trains would sit on platforms 20 to 24. However, that honour has since moved to St Pancras International and platforms 20 to 24 are now used for any domestic and local trains going to Reading. Another tongue twister with much thanks to Marianne Beans railway sightings in Ryslip. This would have been the second time in this show where I'd find myself travelling through London Underground when the tube was on strike when I was making the last episode so I couldn't really get a full run on the tube. Then again, to be honest, as excited as I am that I get to explore different parts of the UK, London's Underground doesn't really offer the most pleasant of travels. Well, that depends on whereabouts in London you're travelling to. I find that the underground platforms can get cold because most of it the is next underground. Embankment. Change here for Bakerloo, Circle, and District Lines. Exit for riverboat services from Embankment here. And then you need to take Please into account the gap between the train and the platform. All the soil and grass, the tunnels, and not forgetting the River Thames itself. The tubes themselves mm. can get very hot and stuffy wow. since you can't open any windows. But I have even bigger fish to fry since I personally suffer, suffer from FOMO, the fear of missing out. I am always on my phone using different types of social media such as Facebook and YouTube. And because I'm plummeted underground, there is no reception. And I find myself asking, what if I missed out on this time? However, as a sign of relief for those who always check up on the world, me included, not all of the London Underground stations are underground. For example, Canning Town is overground since it links to Rockland's Light Railway. And some stations are half and half. Wimbledon's railway station is entirely overground, 
Platforms one to four serve the underground there. Uh, platform 10 is for London Tram. Platforms five to nine are for National Rail Services. I am now at London Euston as I travel up to the next destination on my journey, Liverpool. The two stations that I'm looking at are both underground. Liverpool Lime Street and Liverpool Central. Well, their platforms are at least. You go back overground to switch platforms. But even then, you may find yourself in a bit of a maze when it comes to Liverpool Lime Street Station. This station is one of the six stations that's based underground alongside Liverpool Central, Birkenhead Hamilton Square, Conway Park, James Street and Moorfields. There are 11 platforms in this station, but only one of them is underground. Platforms 1 to 10 are the ground floor platforms and platform A is the underground platform. It's interesting to note that the ground floor platforms here are numbered and the underground platform is lettered. The main station of Liverpool Lime Street opened in 1836 and the underground platform opened in 1977. There's a report written by Simon Jenkins listing the top 100 best railway stations in the UK and he reported that Liverpool Lime Street is one of the only 10 stations to get 5 out of 5 stars. This station underwent some refurbishments during its time. The underground had a refurbishment in 2013 and the main station had one in 2017. Liverpool Central is the other station that's based underground but you end up going overground to switch the platforms. This has got to be the smallest central station I've ever visited in my entire life. It only has three platforms and there's no level crossing. But then again, this station is entirely underground and therefore a level crossing wouldn't be needed here. Platforms one and two are on the lower ground floor and platform three is based inside the basement. The station serves trains going to Kirby via Edgeworth and Fazakley, and another service that runs back to Lime Street and South Parkway. The underground network of Liverpool is the smallest one out of the four. Only six stations here are underground. Compare that to the 272 underground stations that make up London. You would change this station for Liverpool South Parkway, which then continues to Manchester Piccadilly, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Just as a side note, if I find that I run into problems along my journey, I will keep you updated in these episodes, just so you know exactly what's going on. I am now travelling on the train from Liverpool Central at the start of the journey up to the next destination. There are three railway stations in Manchester. Or four. Manchester Airport, Manchester Piccadilly, Manchester Oxford Road and Manchester Victoria. There is an interesting fact about Manchester Piccadilly. It's got 12 platforms on the ground and two on the bridge. Portsmouth and Southsea is another station that does this. It just has a six of the stations on the ground. I need to change here because I'm changing New York as well. And um, that's the Piccadilly is based on that line. Now, I boarded on terminal platforms before, but I've never stepped foot onto either platform 13 or 14 before. So I'm very excited to see what adventures lie ahead. But I figured that while I have a change here that I talk about the ins and outs of Manchester Piccadilly's railway station, it's funny that I should mention that because as soon as I said that I'll keep you guys updated if something goes wrong, something does go wrong and I had a five minute delay with my EMR train. Anyway, back to this. This station's got 14 platforms. Platforms 1 to 12 are terminals on the ground, whereas platforms 13 and 14 are located on the bridge and they provide the services to and from Liverpool. I am currently stood on platform 14 um, and this is where my next train is. There is also a tram stop underneath the station, but that's not counted as an underground location because it's only under the station 
and not underground. This station opened in 1842 and was originally named Store Street. It was renamed Manchester London Road in 1847. It was continually expanded and renovated across its 175 year run. It was renamed Manchester Piccadilly in 1960 and its last reservation was in 2002. The train shed here was a designated grade two listed building in 1994. There is an entrance on those two, these two platforms that take it down to the other 12 platforms. I'll show you these in another episode because my train is due soon and since I have a reservation I need to make sure that I don't miss it. Newcastle's railway station has some great potentials going on here. The main station itself offers services across a substantial amount of England and some parts of Scotland. All the services that call at this station span across 12 platforms. This station opened in 1850 and then became part of the Newcastle and Carlisle Railway and it was part of the York, Newcastle and Berwick Railway. Newcastle station has the honour of being the only intermediate station of the Flying Scotsman that runs early in the morning to London King's Cross from Edinburgh and trains south to Birmingham, Birmingham New Street which uh, cross country offer. This station was also the terminus of an early morning train from Guildford but that service was suspended in 2020. The answer to when or if the service will come back remains unknown. I personally hope it does as it was my go-to train for travelling to Sheffield with just one change. In 1847 a contract was let for the main part of the work to Mackay and Blackstock for £92,000. It may not sound like a lot, but £92,000 in 1847's money is equivalent to about £10.1 million in today's currency. So this is where I get the tube from the underground to, of Newcastle's railway station. I've never used these subs before, so I'm very excited to see where this will take me. And after I get off at my designated station of South Gosforth, I will then just be a short walk up to the hotel. This day has been exciting and brilliant, but now I think that I'm ready for some food and to wrap the day up. And what a better way to do that than to stay inside a Holiday Inn hotel. A special thanks goes to Holiday Inn's Gosforth Hotel for making my stay possible. Join me for day two and I will take you to the last remaining place that has an underground network. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day travelling and it's going to be another fun day travelling too. It's day two of my journey up to Glasgow and that's where I'm heading off to at this point. This is the start of a three hour journey and things are getting exciting as I'm looking at travelling underground on the Glasgow subway. I'm also going to explore the two main stations that take you underground. I'm getting off first at Glasgow Queen Street and then I'll go underground to Glasgow Central. I have an hour and a half to explore the many splendours that Glasgow has to offer. I visited Glasgow on a previous outing in 2013 when I recorded a podcast for Series 9 of the DMC Podcast. Here I am in 2022, looking deeper into the mysteries that lie behind the heart of two of Glasgow's railway stations. It's also worth noting here that I must make a change at Edinburgh's main station, and this train only calls at one station in between that, Berwick-upon-Tweed. Now Berwick-upon-Tweed has a bit of a history going to and from the Scots and the English, but to this day, this historic place remains on the English side of the border. Glasgow Queen Street Station has two opening dates. The high levels of platforms 1 to 7 opened in 1842, and the low level platforms 8 and 9 opened in 1886. Glasgow Queen Street is ranked number 3 in the busiest stations in Scotland third behind Glasgow Central and Edinburgh's main station in Waverley. In 2017, major construction took place. This brought the station up to modern standards, demolished all the buildings from the 60s 
and replace them with a concourse. These works were completed in 2021 and cost a total of £120 million. ScotRail currently manages the day-to-day -day activities in this station, but reports have emerged that National Rail may take over these in due course. Buchanan Street was one of four terminal stations that opened in 1849, but the Beaching Cups had closed this station in 1966. However, the underground station below this station remains open and allows you to go to St Enoch, which sits below Glasgow Central. I'm off there now, so I'll see you on the other side of Glasgow. There are two circles that go around Glasgow in opposite directions. The underground network of Glasgow consists of just 15 stations, two of which lie beneath Glasgow, Queen Street and Glasgow Central. And um, I'm travelling to St Enoch, which is near Glasgow Central. I haven't used the Glasgow subway before, so it will be very exciting to see the adventures that lie ahead. However, my journey using the Glasgow sub would be very short indeed, as I'm only going to the next station. But then again, this should be exciting, as I get to see exactly what lies ahead. I'm now just going to hop on the subway so that it allows me just to sit back and relax and to think of the eight and a half hour journey home that lies ahead. Hurdy gurdy gurdy in the windy boxes. Well, Glasgow Central is another one of those big stations with the number of platforms matching the age of Abba's Dancing Queen. Of the 17 platforms that are in this station, 15 of them are on the ground floor and the other two are underground. The report listing the 100 best stations in the UK mentions that this is one of only 10 stations to get 5 stars. And this station received the highest customer satisfaction rate in the UK with a score of 95.2%. It is the busiest railway station in Scotland where passenger numbers in 2017 to 2018 came in at just under 33 million. It is also the 12th busiest railway station in the whole of the UK. Uh, this station also hosts the Caledonian sleeper train every day and this goes down to London Euston. I would love to travel on this train eventually as it sounds like a great train journey. I'll do this later on in the show. I'm going down to platform 16 to 17 as I have enough time to explore the lower level of the station, or I was. Um, okay, I said it before on my last outing in 2013, but due to the nature of this episode, I would like to see it again. However, it's closed off, so never mind. But it will be a reminder of better things that await the railway network for the whole of the UK. And now at the start of an eight and a half hour journey going back home whilst changing at Crewe, Wolverhampton and Guildford. And I just thought to myself, what is a better way to wrap up this monster of an episode than to analyse the ins and outs of each location's underground network? First off, let me start with the number of stations in each underground location I'll start with the place with the fewest stations and work my way up. In fourth place is Liverpool with just six stations. Uh, this includes Liverpool Lime Street and Liverpool Central. In third place is Glasgow with 15 stations of which includes St Enoch for Glasgow Central and Buchanan Street for Glasgow Queen Street. In second place is Newcastle with 60 stations and the first place, unsurprisingly, is London with 272 stations split across the nine fare zones. With London's underground system being as massive as it is, it comes as no surprise as to why newcomers are getting lost and why people like myself who haven't even explored 10% of the area are also getting lost. Well, as for Liverpool, I can safely say that I've seen half of the underground stations by visiting only three of them. Glasgow's underground was a real treat as I've seen it but never got to ride on it. Also I didn't even realise how big Newcastle's underground system was 
I honestly thought the underground network there would be a third of the size. I hope you enjoyed the 48 hour tour of the underground mysteries that are obtained by these four locations. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be looking at some terminal stations in the southeast of England. This episode will also span across a course of 48 hours. I've been Darren Stratton and I would like to thank you for watching.